Good morning or afternoon and welcome to Unrest Digest. Um, right here would be the news article if I knew what the hell I was doing, but unfortunately I don't. I don't have the tech skills for this just yet. I'm sure I can figure it out eventually. But anyway, let's get into today's story that I have chosen. Shamima Begum bid to regain UK citizenship. Rejected. Not good for old Shamima. I know there's been like a countless debate. I mean, I've actually heard like countless different stories um, since the first thing came out. I mean, I will read the article in a minute for you. But what was it like? She When did this first happen? Uh, she joined the Islamic State in 2015, and then, I guess a few years later, she came out and was like, I want to come back. And everyone was like, no, she can't come back, and people were like, I ain't going to let her back, you know. Um, and then, uh, what was it that happened next? Yeah, yeah, she, she said everyone was up in arms, and they got rejected, everyone was like, ah, that's it now. And then I heard sources saying that she snuck back into the country somehow, like she'd been, not snuck, sorry, not, not hadn't sneaked in. That there had been some kind of like uh, NGOs or something that had paid for her to get in, or some court thing had been overturned in, in the dead of night and secret hours, and public wasn't to know. But then apparently she's here again, applying and getting um, rejected. So for, again, um, I will read the article and then I'll get into my own opinions on the matter. Uh, my opinions are a little bit different from average. Uh, well, that's probably some people with my opinion, but I've seen a lot of the whole, lot, you know, good riddance, let her stay there. And I've heard a lot of the, actually, I don't think I've even heard any of the evidences to bring her back. But I'm sure most, some people would have just to be like, oh, you know, she's a UK citizen, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, I'll read the article for you now. But I, no, I don't care if by it's lost a challenge. Shimamba Begum has lost a challenge over the decision to deprive her of prison citizenship Despite a credible case, she was trafficked, apparently. So, oh, sorry for that gap. Anyway, Mr. Justice J told the semi-secret court... See, maybe this is what I was on about. Semi-secret court dealing with her case, that appeal had been fully dismissed. The ruling means the 23-year-old means barred from returning to the UK and stuck in a camp in northern Syria. Really not a great place to be, I don't think. Her legal team said the case was nowhere near over and the decision will be challenged. I heard they could take this to The Hague. Um, I thought The Hague was just um, the court that tried you during war times. I've only ever heard of it referenced in World War I. I, I know I'm probably wrong. Um, if you want to try her in front of The Hague, that's, that's, a, that's a different question. Miss Begum was 15 years old and she travelled to join the self style self style self style Islamic State group in 2015. I haven't heard of ISIS for a while, have we? Since um, Trump basically blew the head of them. Was it Al Baghdadi? What a name. Anyway, uh, yeah, I think he's uh, yeah he's out. She went on to have three children, all of whom have died after marrying a fighter within the group. With the group, sorry. Yeah, that's one of the things that's kind of like. People have said for her case, like, she's had kids, they've died. I'm sure it was to do with um, the state of Syria, the leftover and all the, the war, the wreckage, the carnage, the disease, poverty. Yeah, so you, you can understand some people's sympathies for her, especially going through such an awful thing. And I think it is key to mention that when she did join the Islamic State, she was 15. Um, she was groomed into it, I believe, by an online... Um, sort of videos and probably shared from friends of friends or possibly or going down internet sort of rabbit holes and dark corners of the internet and stuff and grooming is grooming it's not just grooming um, when it comes to like say paedophilia for small children grooming you can be groomed into anything um, sorry something came up on the bloody phone and I think the fact that she's a child, this is obviously my personal opinion coming through her a little bit early on, I think that should give her some leeway. Obviously, she is no longer a um, child. I believe now she is, or let's do the math, shall we? 15 in 2015, I think it was quite an easy, quite an easy sum to do. She's 23 now. I actually said 23 in the article. I actually did just read that anyway. 
How can you lose your citizenship? In 2019, the then Home Secretary, Sajid Javid, stripped her of her British citizenship, preventing her coming home and leaving her detained in the, as an IS supporter in a camp. So if she already had a citizenship, I'm not sure what stopped her from coming home. The Special Immigration Appeals Commission has ruled that decision taken after the ministers received national security advice about Miss Begum's threat to the UK had been lawful, even though her lawyers had presented strong arguments she was a victim. Yeah, this is this is the debate, isn't it? Um, yes, she was groomed into it, but I'm not sure, I'm not sure if she, how much she played a part in any terrorist acts over in Syria, or if she, you know, I'm not sure there is certain, she, she helped out, obviously. So, you know, there's a difference between, say, she's gone over there, you know, and drawn up some plans of terrorist acts or in wars and stuff, and she's just been there with a bloke and, you know, cleaned the house for him and stuff, versus if she actually grabbed a weapon and murdered people or, you know, planted bombs, etc, etc. And, um, were they against the UK or US forces or whatever, any of our, like, personal forces? Was it against the natives of Syria? I think it's a different question when it comes to, come, I can't really get my words out. I think that is, anyway, ignore that last bit. But you know what I'm getting at. During the appeal hearing last November, Miss Begum lawyer argued the decision had been unlawful because the Home Secretary had failed to consider whether she had been a victim of child trafficking, which I really, like, I don't know how else you can put it. Like, she she was clearly trafficked. Um, you know, just because a child is sex trafficked and the child agrees to it, they're not a prostitute, are they? Or you know agrees to horrible sex acts with an adult doesn't make them. It doesn't. <laughs> the last I heard this when it came to the grooming scandals. It doesn't make them a prostitute. Therefore, by using that logic, she was trafficked. I don't know. Is there such a thing as war trafficking? She was trafficked into war. Uh, terrorist tracking. I don't, I don't know what you want to call it. Well, yeah, she'd been a victim of child trafficking. I don't know how you can argue against that. You can argue that she was trafficked, but she was old enough to know what she was doing. She committed crimes, etc., etc. She's now an adult, and I'm sure she did stuff. You know, I'm not sure when she put her claim in. Did she put a claim in when she was then 17? Or, you know, did she put in a claim when she was 19? Was it six months later when she was still 15? Like, do we care that much about the difference in age of such a when you're so close to becoming an adult. The f anyway, anyway, that was the first time judges had to consider whether the state's obligations to combat trafficking and abuse of children should have any influence over national security decisions. Mr Justice Jay revealed the complexity of the case that caused the panel of three great concern and difficulty. The commission concluded there was a credible suspicion that Miss Begum had been trafficked to Syria, as you said in his summary. Like, what did she do? What, what, she went there on a holiday. I don't know how else she got there. You know what I mean? Whether she willfully did or not, it's unless she went there independently of her own volition. You could argue that it wasn't trafficking, but I don't know what else you call it. it definitely was some kind of grooming, and you know, unless she just saw ISIS on TV and thought, I, "I'm going to go join that." No one would believe that there wasn't some kind of grooming going on, even if you couldn't prove it. The motive to bring her. To Syria was sexual exploitation to which, as a child, she could not give valid consent. See, this is what I was saying. When it comes to sex trafficking, it's a different... Well, actually, sorry, it should be the exact same kind of standards. People seem to not view it the same way. And I believe this is what her her lawyers are arguing, and she was trafficked for sex, obviously, to change the judge's mind on the, thing, on the fact... For some reason, it's different. As I said, like, she was groomed and trafficked. That was that's pretty much evident. I would happily have a conversation or a debate on, on those issues, but if someone's got an alternative opinion, but that's probably why they're going down the hole. She was brought there for sexual exploitation. And if she's had three children and she was young, and this doesn't seem to be any, I've not heard any other evidence of her doing anything else except being a mother to dying children, like that would go, in my opinion, for her. And, when it comes to being sex trafficked, I, I think, you know, that would go her way in court slightly. The motive for bringing 
uh, to Sirius, uh, I already read that bit, I'm sorry. The Commission also conducted there were arguable breaches of duty on the part of various state bodies in permitting Miss Begum to leave the country and she did not eventually cross the border from Turkey to, into Syria. Oh, she was lucky she escaped that earthquake. A little side note, this was this was horrible by the way, this is not to do with this. I was playing a football manager and I um I couldn't remember the name of this football player and it had been bugging me for a while and in the end I sort of gave up. And then I saw his name in the news, Christian Atsu, uh, ex-Chelsea player, but he didn't actually play for them, but he went out on loan from, sorry, from them on loan to another, another club. Yeah, he died in the Turkey Syria earthquake. And I was just a bit, I don't know, for some reason that sort of hit me because I'd been trying to remember the bloke's bloody name. And he, he just gets bloody, I don't know what you call it, earthquakes. But despite those concerns, anyway, getting back into it, despite those concerns, the judge said that even if Miss Begum had been trafficked, that did not trump Home Secretary's legal duty to make a national security decision, decision to strip her of her British nationality. Um, given the state of the whole illegals coming into this country um, and the whole national security debate, I, I think you've dropped the ball so, so many times that... No, that, that isn't a good argument to uh, just say, oh, well, why not have one more? <laughs> but I suppose this is the case for them to stand up and be like, oh, you know, we're actually really good at our job. We didn't let that Shamala Begum in. We did let in like a thousand other bloody terrorists or people that we didn't know what they did. Like that, the one, was it the Syrian guy who um, blew up in the Manchester bombing? Um, yeah, he'd also been rescued by like the Coastal Navy or something. Uh, and taken and brought to this country. There is some merit in the argument that those advising the Secretary of State see this as a black and white issue, when many would say that there are shades of grey, said the judge in her summary. And I would um, say that those shades of grey, obviously the black, it, well, it depends which, which one you think is good and which one you think is bad, but black and white, um, either you leave her there or you bring her back. I think the grey area is you bring her back and then you uh, put her in prison. Or obviously after a fair trial, maybe she's found not guilty with different lawyers or maybe the same lawyers and a different jury. And then goes to an English prison rather than being stuck over in Syria because she is a British national. And I also believe the whole uh, um, we should save British nationals from foreign prisons you know, as much as we can, if, you know, if like they've done a drug traffic and uh, getting a hundred years in prison and beatings on, on weekly, then I think we should try and have them extradited back to her so we can put them in our prison and try them or, you know, under different rules. I mean, maybe there should be some kind of legal thing of, you know, maybe I don't, I don't necessarily agree with the whole with drugs, it's a completely different debate. I'm on about for the sake of just these things. Like maybe you could try them for, I don't know, drug smuggling in another country is a new crime because we have to bring them back here, etc. because we don't want them rotting in other people's jails. I don't know if that's even a good idea, to be honest. I'd happily have a debate around that. I could go through the previous legal failures, but it's a long sort of case and I've already been sort of 13 minutes now. I mean, that's what I put. Anyway, I went through roughly what I personally believe. She was a child. She was trafficked, and she's been. She'd had a pretty horrible time. However, she had still joined a terrorist group. Um, if there's evidence of her committing any crimes herself, then those should be addressed. But I don't know what the crime is for joining a terrorist group. I know it's you know kind of illegal. But if that's it, bring her back here. Try her here. I'm what I'm. What I am for though is very low prison sentences, but then some kind of like monitoring to make sure that she's not coming over here and then she's gonna just blow herself up again. God, sorry, <laughs> again. sorry, I got sued for that. Um, how do I say, uh, disregard that. She doesn't come up over here and commit some kind of crime or terrorist act. And it was all a ploy the whole time. I mean, I doubt it is, but it's a possibility, which is obviously why they're trying to not let, allow her back in because she's a national security threat and I understand that but people can be reformed and 
as much as I also don't like the idea of security and people spying and stuff, I think when you've committed some kind of crimes, if she accepts that, she doesn't have to come back. But I think she should be come back, sentenced to some kind of prison. Uh, sentenced to some kind of prison sentence, you know what I mean? And then maybe allowed out, but we keep an eye on her, basically. And um, I'm going to end this video. That's that's all I have to say on this matter for the time being. Maybe I'll post another thing, uh, video again when it comes to this this topic. I'm not really sure. It's not the most interesting topic I understand. But please like, comment, subscribe, and um, yeah, check out my next video. Thanks.